Okay, cool. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So this is the project update for the documentation team. Um, we look after the OpenStack manuals uh, repository. So my name is Alexandra Settle, or A Settle on IOSC. Um, I am the PTL uh, for the Pike release. Um, and these are my colleagues, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Um, um, yes, I, I'm Olga. Uh, I'm a core reviewer in the OpenStack documentation upstream. So I'm with the community with OpenStack for two years already. It was, it's a great time. Thank you. Uh, so we are, we are here just to present uh, the update of, uh, of what uh, we plan for the Pike and for the future releases. Uh, I, we have <laughs> the third so the picker, it's uh, my teammate, okay. Uh, thank you, Olga. I'm Alex. Uh, I'm happy to, to see you here. Um, I will talk a few words about uh, writing uh, security documentation, uh, impact and the importance of this activity for the project, for the upcoming release project. Cool. So this is the three of us. So there's a team of probably about, uh, I think it's probably about 10 or 12 cores. Um, we are quite a big core group, but we're not all full-time. So uh, I work, like all, all full-time working upstream, I should say. Um, so I've been working on the project for about three and a half years now. So since the Ice House release. So just been a little while now. Anyway, so uh, for, as if you've been to these project updates before, you will know that we're gonna go through a little bit of what's happening in Pike, which is the current release. Um, what we're planning to do for the following releases, which is going to be Queens and Rocky. Um, and then we're just going to have a little bit of questions and feedback. So we're going to kind of keep this as like, not the most in, like formal thing ever. Um, I know that it's recorded, but you know, it's just kind of make it chill, let you know what's going on and move from that. So what does our documentation team do? So essentially, like we are officially the OpenStack manuals team and we currently look after the uh, OpenStack manuals. These are all of our repositories. Uh, so we do the API ref, security doc, training guides, and training labs. Uh, the API ref security tra and the training sections are actually all under different specialty leads. So if you sort of look at it like, a, like an umbrella, there's me at the top, we have our specialty leads in all of our cores, which look after the um, OpenStack manuals. So we actually have quite an extensive amount of documentation to look after. We have user guides, admin guides, um, networking, installations, uh, deployments, it's quite a vast selection of stuff. Um, we will continue. So what do we do? Um, we pretty much focus on the creation, maintenance, and organization around docs.openstack.org. So if you've ever been to that site before, um, it is <laughs> quite large, but we, this is where we keep all of our main documentation, and it's actually one of the most um, searched uh, sites for OpenStack. So it's www.openstack.org first, and then it's docs.openstack.org. So we have a really large uh, customer base, which is really important for our users and operators. Okay, so we were unofficially founded in the Austin release, uh, and then we were officially from Bexar, so 2010-ish. Um, it was actually started by Anne Gentle, who is still a major contributor, and she actually looks after our API references. Um, we had 162 contributors for the latest release. Um, as you can see here, uh, the 61% of the community members use documentation daily or weekly. This is really big. <laughs> um, it means we have a lot of people coming and looking at what we're doing, um, which means we're in the spotlight all the time. There is a lot of pressure to update things continuously. Um, but we have a solid team looking after that, and we have a lot of, the community is really supportive. We have uh, liaisons, so we have doc liaisons. Um, so like the Glance team have a liaison for documentation for us. And we try and make a community, the, com the community all bands together to make it happen. So, Pike, Olga. Okay, so it's quite obvious that uh, the, the major focus uh, of uh, all the, the documentation is uh, user experience, because docs uh, is, u is user ex ex experience. Uh, also, we are uh, some work uh, on manageability as well. Um, now I'm going to move on uh, with the new features and, and enhancements that we plan um, for the Pike. Uh, so the first one is uh, achieving all, all the documentation on docs or open stack org. Um, this um, 
Mm, so this this addresses the requirement to uh, to achieve all uh, uh, the docs that um, um, uh, that that uh, is not uh, uh, and I make it it it, it available uh, to the users who. Uh, or, or who need it, of course. Uh, we know that uh, a lot of people just come to us and say that they need the, the, uh, the ice house release, and, uh, but um, yes, it's um, the problem. Uh, so what is the plan? Uh, we, we, we have the um, um, uh, specification read, ready already. <laughs> Um, uh, the plan is uh, to um, that uh, at every new release, uh, uh, the, the release that comes end of life, uh, uh, we just make the um, uh, the folder that is read read only that that can be downloaded by the user, uh, built uh, locally uh, as well as make it available um, from the from their docs or OpenSet org. Um, Another enhancement is moving uh, the administrator guide to project reports. Uh, as you may know, uh, that uh, um, the number of projects of, of, of OpenStack pro projects uh, is getting uh, um, begin and bigger with, with each release, but the docs uh, team is, sh is shrinking just. <laughs> uh, so we need to, uh, uh, to keep, uh, keep them up, up to date and uh, um, to um, uh, deal with the problem, we, d we decided to, to uh, move them uh, to the project re re the pod repositories just the, the same way we did it with the installation guide and, and uh, PI references. Uh, the sub-tasks uh, sub uh, for uh, this uh, enhancement, uh, for this improvement, is also set, set an up a cookie cutter um, following on from the in, the install guide and deployment guide tool for developers, as well as uh, checking, cleaning up, and editing uh, the content of the guide uh, to, to align the, uh, their content with their conventions that we have in their our contributor con guide for documentation. Um, among uh, the new, uh, other new features uh, is their continued revision of their arch architecture design guide, just to make the, uh, the content um, mm, uh, just uh, to, cr to create the abstraction bit, bit, bit between the cloud uh, architecture co concepts and various OpenStack projects. Um, so, and uh, the last, uh, uh, but probably not <laughs> the least, <laughs> in this list and enhancements uh, is adding uh, the support for, for Reno. Um, that was one of their major uh, tasks um, uh, from Atlanta, PTG. Uh, thanks to uh, Adam Spears, uh, uh, him, him uh, made it, it uh, uh, available, he, he made it happen, and now uh, uh, our uh, repository um, support Reno. So um, I also to I want we decided that it's better once once to see <laughs> uh, than are uh, here for several times, uh, and I want to present just a, a, a small demo uh, to. Um, to show how it works, so there um, your use case is very simple. Uh, it, it, uh, in the result, we uh, we will recreate uh, uh, their um, uh, there is no no report uh, report under the under list subsection of the release notes. So let's let's start. Uh, first, you uh, need to install uh, the Reno tool. Um, uh, just to, to have it <laughs> and on, on your machine, and then you install uh, the Sphinx in ex extension that is built in it, um, and uh, and you know you also see it to build um, their nodes. Mm. Once uh, you you've done it, um, you need to. Uh, to uh, to, to, to clone the repository. Uh, it's all the, 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 the manuals in our case. 
So you change the directory uh, to the repository and uh, here we'll need the release notes directory. So, um, so uh, now you, you just uh, um, uh, keep the, the workflow you, uh, or with, uh, uh, with each review you create the branch for your, for your change. <coughs> And then uh, you using the Reno new command, you create uh, a new uh, release notes report. Report. It will cre cre create a uh, YAML file um, uh, that will be stored uh, in the release no notes directory. Actually, uh, was successful. So you ch you check here the file that we created. Mm, you can see it. So now we uh, need to uh, add the content uh, to this file. So you open um, the file and uh, edit the template that is already there with all of the sections. I decided just to add uh, uh, some text, um, some to the, 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 the contributor guide sec section. So we edit it, we, s uh, we save the file. And uh, now it's very important before you build um, uh, uh, to see the, the output for your use talks, you need to add uh, to, to commit your, your change. Of course, talks will, um, uh, will uh, uh, use the, the, the logs uh, to, uh, to build the other output. So you, you commit your, your, your change. Um, Create the Garrett. Um, yeah, so um, is there? Are you uh, 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 now? I, I recommend that you um, check there uh, the output you use in Tox command. You can view it locally uh, in the build uh, build uh, directory that is uh, recreated automatically once you run Tox. So open uh, unreleased. And in there, there you. I just want to add to this. One of the exciting things about what we've done with Reno is usually you'd come with a set of um, a, a format, a template that was just simply like updates, config. Um, we worked with the Reno team, specifically Doug Hellman and Adam Spears, to actually make this uh, completely um, separate for docs. We made sure that we're actually able to update per book rather than per project. Um, so that was just something, sorry, I just wanted to quickly no, add I that. I just got the, 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 mid, uh, the change. Uh, I checked that, uh, that everything's in, in place. Marked it um, now. Uh, okay, I, I mark it as a work in progress, not to, to confuse <laughs> the reviewers. And uh, in a while, you just can check uh, um, uh, the build, so it's in place. Uh, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. Under there, there uh, as, uh, as you remember, we created the one under the um, uh, release subsection. So it's here. Okay. Uh, back to the template. Uh, yes, it's good, uh, and uh, um, I think that we have uh, all the errors in place here from the um, uh, changes uh, that are we really are visible to you, to the users. Uh, that that can be some changes in UI on on uh, the site, as well as some some in, in, in internal changes like translations uh, or something like like that and. Also, um, uh, the template includes the section uh, that, that are dedicated to, um, the, the to the guides, something like user, admin, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and if you want to add some, some section, uh, you just need to, um, uh, uh, to commit the change, not to the project itself here, but, but for, for this template to, to configure YAML file. So that's the workflow, thank you. So, uh, to add to that one, previously we were actually building all of our release notes manually, which meant at the end of each release it was up to the uh, specialty team leads to build it. Um, one of the problems that we've been having is uh, 
we've been losing like uh, major core contributors to the documentation project, um, which has led to less people being able to form these specialty teams, um, which then has also meant that we're losing, you know, we're losing the ability to like uh, have concentrated efforts. So we're trying to recentralize and having the Reno support release notes was really important for that. Um, having something automated that our contributors could directly con um, contribute to. So I just also wanted to talk about uh, this one last thing that we've actually worked on at a very last minute. Uh, this is a governance documentation tag. So governance has tags um, to govern projects. Um, we actually previously haven't had anything like this for documentation. Um, it's, this is just designed that, uh, okay, let me start this again because I'm rambling in circles. Basically what happened was, is it got to a point where our installation guides were not being verified by anyone outside of the documentation team, which in fairness is our domain, but it is becoming less and less our domain because we've been pushing the installation guides back on the project teams and we're about to do the exact same thing for the admin guides. This is important because uh, a doc information, per information developer or a technical writer has a base level of information on every project. They do not have the in-depth knowledge that a developer and a key operator and user has on that totally different side. So we can easily go through and verify these guides by just going click step by step but a full manual install takes several days. And what was happening is we were finding a lot of failures later on because we were, there was a communication, there was like a, a distance in communication between what was happening in the projects versus what was actually being documented upstream. And because essentially we are the official documentation, that was a big problem when no one can install and no one can start up an instance. So I threw a little tantrum and I went up to the government's department, <laughs> government's repo, and I was like, we need to make this official. We need to have a check that these projects are actually making sure that they are verifying this. And what this means is that they get this tag associated with their project once they have verified their guides. So this will apply to not only the installation guides, but the admin guides that we're also going to push out, as Olga was mentioning. So this is going to be really important for like the future. This is specifically for our users and also like our operators and developers as well, just so that they know that this is going to be important to our future. Um, but this was a bit of a random last minute thing after we've kind of had a couple of releases now where things haven't quite gone as smoothly as they probably should have. So we're trying to govern it a bit more and make it a bit more, I don't know, easier, basically. So Alex is going to go through Queens now. Unexpectedly, Queens uh, has um, a continuation of the activities started in Pike, uh, but what's, uh, what's different is uh, you can see the major focus is uh, on security during this release. As you know, uh, uh, OpenStack documentation uh, has uh, a security guide created uh, with the help of uh, Rob Clark's uh, security team. Unfortunately, uh, it's been created like for, for many years ago and need to be redesigned, reconstructed, taking into consideration new features and uh, new threats we have. And uh, uh, that's why uh, we have a link to other part where we collected uh, the main uh, problems um, found in the security guide and the new table of contents. So you can actually take a participation uh, in, this, in this activity as well. <clears throat> Um, luckily, uh, I was involved in uh, uh, writing security best practices for Mirantis, and this uh, sounds uh, pretty, pretty much similar, and uh, I can uh, emphasize that uh, actually bad things uh, happen uh, by day two, so when it's, everything is deployed, it uh, works well, but uh, some vulnerability can be found, and the uh, administrator need to think how to, how to fix this vulnerability, how to patch, apply the patch, and here, a uh, security guide uh, comes. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. So the Rocky release um, is gonna, it's obviously two release time from now. And this is a little bit harder to think this far forward because one of our biggest things is user experience. Documentation is all about the user who's reading it, who's our customer, and our customer is always the operator. Um, in saying this, you know, our biggest problem right now is what is our future? So we've been, you know, today has been really big for us. Um, at 12 o'clock we had a session on, you know, what's the future of the documentation team? How are we gonna keep, continue maintaining our docs the way we currently are? Historically speaking, we've always had a team that has been able to dedicate time to this process, and we've also had plenty of uh, one-off contributors 
or irregular contributors from different projects that are able to put in the time and effort to help us. But this is becoming less and less available. So we've had a lot of discussions about where we're going to go. We're trying to automate as many documents as we can. So we're already looking at automating our configuration reference and our command line documents. We're looking at creating new scripts. We're also looking at pushing uh, the administration guides and all of the uh, install guide back to the project repos. And with that, we are then going to switch the process, uh, most likely. This will be a specification, so I'm definitely giving you insider info as of from 12. Um, we're going to look at, uh, instead of uh, there being a liaison from the development team to us, we're going to be liaison specifically to the team. So as an example, I would look after the Nova team, but I could also then do three what are called optional projects. So that way I could maybe look after Designate, Swift, and the Banana project. Um, that doesn't exist. Uh, so you know what I mean? Like we're trying, we're kind of come up with new ways of doing this, uh, thinking of new different things, but this is our key focus for Rocky. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that we're gonna have all these amazing things happening because right now our main focus is what's gonna happen. We have an amazing documentation suite and it can all be maintained by the, like the um, community but we need to be looking a little further ahead now. Um, we did start everything in Austin and technically Bexar, which has been a really long time, but that doesn't mean it's gonna keep going full steam ahead the way it is. We have to start thinking about the future and how this is actually gonna, like, how we're gonna actually make this work. Because I mean, the amount of times um, I've had a lot of people say, you know, documentation is so important, documentation is so important, but you, that doesn't really come through at the end of the day. You know, people are really happy to say what they want to say to your face um, when it comes down to it. You know, we really struggle to get contributors and realize that documentation is important. I could stand up here all day and tell you about how the users need documentation, and without the users, you do not have a development project. I mean, you do, but no one uses it. <laughs> but, you know, that aside, this is our focus. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're going, and we'd love to have people along for the ride and working on it with us. We've got some cool things coming up. We're archiving. We're moving back but we're still also keeping our core team together and making sure that we're a centralized team. So that's really important to us right now. So yeah, this is a slide that they kind of made us do. I'm sure you guys have kind of seen it by now, but it's pretty much just like a couple of questions. I mean, if anyone can help us, anyone who operates and uses OpenStack and has used our guides before, I'd love to hear from you. But if you haven't, that's okay as well. Or if you just have other questions, that works as well. But this is kind of where we're at right now, what we're thinking. And this is just like random questions. This isn't, you know, any targeted anything. We're just trying to figure things out and where we should be going. So, you got any questions or you got any bright ideas? I'm right here. Thank you. I have an idea. Question. Please, go for it. Uh, I, I wonder if uh, OpenStack.org uh, has uh, some analytics that will help uh, to figure out, like, uh, how, how uh, users, uh, they read the documentation, whether they uh, enter uh, the main page, main documentation page, docs, openstack.org. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, we do. And the, yeah, there is a uh, like special, um, separate um, like flow, uh, users for flow that will help to figure out how, how, how users get uh, the documentation, what, uh, what, what, what what are they looking for, actually? What are they looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we can, we've sp I've spent a lot of time looking at these um, analytics. Um, what it comes down to is that our install guide is absolute top. So when, if these analytics basically show that the, for, as far as OpenStack concerned, the top hit goes to OpenStack.org and the second top hit is docs.openstack.org. And that is by a million views. Um, it's, it's really intense, and that, but that's also great. It means that you know, people are viewing it and they want it and they're interested. Um, and then from there, we've noticed that it's our install guides and our networking guides. Um, they are our absolute top, but networking is <laughs> it's very specialized. Um, we don't have a lot of people that are able to do this intense networking configurations, because it, it's not just down to the Neutron team. It is so much more than that, and it's really quite difficult. So I mean, we have all these numbers and we're able to point uh, you know, the Chinese contingent is huge. Um, our translation team works, you know, overtime to get the Chinese translations out. Whoopsie daisies, sorry guys. Um, 
We've most recently moved to using PDFs as well, um, simply because the Chinese contingent definitely wanted this. This was important for them. They wanted to be able to download it and hold onto that document rather than having to access the internet constantly. Um, so yeah, I mean, the stats are, stats are good and they all point us in the right direction, sort of, but it can be a bit, I don't know if, yeah. I mean, there's plenty we can look at here. I've got them all downloaded. I've got a lot to go through, but yeah. Okay, can, can I click on some? Go for it, items, please. If, if it's not secret. No. I think that is real time. Okay. Yeah, any thoughts, any questions? Or are you guys all just here because it's an empty room? If you are, that's okay. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, anyway, I don't have anything else, I don't think, unless anyone has any questions about project stuff. But if anyone's interested, we have an operations and administrations guide moderated session tomorrow. Um, we're gonna be looking at uh, the overlap between these guides because, well, administration is for operators and the operations guide is also for operators. But one is slightly more theoretical and one is definitely more practical. Um, but it is definitely maintaining two things at once that probably don't need to be. So we're kind of trying to hopefully reach out to our operators and see what they actually want rather than guessing. So if anyone's able and interested to attend that, that would be great. Um, we also have a session on developer.openstack.org, which is our API site, in which we look after all the API and SDKs as well. So if anyone wants to come talk about that as well, we'll be doing that on Wednesday. Um, we'll be looking at, you know, who's our audience, what do, what do they actually want? Because at the moment, nobody seems to know, which seems to be a bit of a common problem with OpenStack. <laughs> yeah, cool. Excellent, love the blank faces. <laughs> Thank you.